Shalom from Jerusalem. This is our Middle East. Al Shak al Asad Lana Man. All of us together, our region today is the Iranian octopus about to strangle Tel Aviv as it has spread its tentacles across Europe and the United States. We'll find out. This is Jihad in Janine. I'm very honored uh, to have uh, Yoni Ben Menachem. You've been a, a guest on this program before, Yoni. Uh, we're in an emergency situation in uh, Judea and Samaria, one of the, the heavily populated cities of, of Palestinian Arabs that the Palestinian Authority is supposed to control. They've lost complete control. And, uh, and who's stolen their control? The Islamic Republic of Iran, by orders of Supreme Leader Khali uh, uh, Khamenei. Uh, you've been worrying about this uh, for weeks, Yoni. This is no surprise for you. Actually, I was worrying about it uh, for two years, for the last two years. And, uh, you know, our uh, Jerusalem uh, Public Affairs Center published a few articles about it. And uh, we were warning the political echelon of this process that is going to happen. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, they didn't do anything uh, to prevent it. Uh, I just want to... Uh, to tell you how the process started, it started after the uh, after May 2021, after the operation of Guardian the, of walls. the walls in Gaza. Uh, the Iranians uh, saw an opportunity to take control over uh, the West Bank. Uh, and how did they do that? They took uh, uh, the Islamic Jihad uh, organization headed by Ziad al Nahali, which is a branch office of the Iran, of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps of Iran. Completely financed and supported by Iran. Uh, it's an Iranian affiliate. Uh, he was uh, summoned to Tehran after the, the operation of the IDF in Gaza. And he, he met with uh, General Hussein Salami, the head of the Revol Revolutionary Guards and with Ali Khamenei, the supreme leader of Iran. And then they set the strategy of setting up what they call battalions of Mujahideen, of uh, Islamic Jihad, uh, in all the cities uh, of the West Bank of Judea and Samaria, the Palestinian cities, of course. Uh, since the infrastructure of Islamic Jihad is very strong in the north of Judea and Samaria, we're talking about uh, uh, Jenin, uh, Nablus, and the uh, Tulparem yeah. area, yeah. Uh, so they're starting to set up these uh, small groups. They started the small groups uh, of battalions, and uh, it was a small monster of terror, but it grew during the last two years. It grew to be, to be a big monster. Today we're talking about according to the estimation of the IDF and the Shabbat and of the Shin Bet, we're talking about 2,000 armed terrorists in the north of Samaria. In these areas, uh, equipped with weapons, uh, rockets, rockets that are building the infrastructure of, uh, infrastructure of rockets, uh, laboratories of, uh, to produce uh, explosive devices. Uh, this infrastructure grew during the last two years when uh, Naftali Bennett was prime minister and when Yair Lapid was prime minister. And uh, uh, when they, these small groups were small, it was the right time to uh, go into Jenin, go into Tulkara, into Nablus and hit them and, 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 and eliminate the uh, military infrastructure. But it was not done, apparently because of American pressure of the Biden administration. And uh, uh, both Bennett and Lapid and, uh, and Gantz, as the defense minister, they settled for uh, a, a, an IDF operation of arrest, daily arrest, which is called Shover Agalim uh, uh, operation. And the, the army, Israeli army, uh, went every night to arrest wanted Palestinians in these areas of North uh, Samaria. But of course, it was not enough to stop the terrorism. And what we see now is this big monster uh, growing, growing, becoming such a big monster. This monster is an Iranian regime octopus right. that, be, that, that basically metastasized since 1979 when Khomeini came back from Paris in order to uh, mobilize uh, millions of Iranians 
uh, for in, the Islamic the, Revolution. For the Islamic Revolution, the IRGC and its foreign terror arm, the Quds Force, which means Jerusalem in Arabic, which they use on purpose because they use Jerusalem as the, I mean, talk about uh, creating reality through language, through trying to uh, coalesce and unite the entire Muslim world, uh, Sunnah and Shia, around the idea of uh, the historic uh, Jewish capital of uh, uh, the nation state of the Jewish people, uh, in order uh, to try to get to to try to, in a way, embrace Iran, the Iranian regime's greatest enemy, which are the Sunnah, which, which are the Sunnah even more than the, uh, even more than the Jews. So here they are in Janine. Let's. I want to emphasize to our listeners and our viewers: this is not an intifada. This is not an uprising. This is a pincer movement. Uh, in which the Iranian regime has planned for decades to surround Israel's major cities from the the south, which it is doing through Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad in Gaza. This they are outflanking Israel in the north from uh, Hezbollah, Iranian-controlled Lebanon, uh, and they control all of Lebanon. Let's be very clear: there's not just southern Lebanon; they control Lebanon, and they also control Syria which is basically a puppet state of the Iranian regime. And Iraq. And Iraq through the special forces uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in Iraq. So here this is a pincer movement to surround Israel, and, they, and, they, and the Iranian octopus is, al- is alive and well and digging and its, its tentacles around Israel's major cities above Israel. Above Israel. Right. I mean, sorry, above Israel's major cities, 3,500 feet higher because what is called the former West Bank of Jordan, Janine, Samaria is northern Samaria is is much higher than the coastal cities. People don't realize that, and that's one of the major dangers to Israel's existence. Yeah, uh, I would add to what you said uh, that this is the strategy of Qasem Soleimani, who used to be the head of a uh, Quds Force, was uh, assassinated by. He was the head of IRGC. Actually. Hey, that, you know, he was the head of the uh, Quds Force. Qasem Soleimani, who was replaced by Ismail Kahani, which is the present uh, commander of the Quds Force. Uh, Qasem Soleimani was uh, assassinated by the American... 2020. Army, yeah, in, in Iraq, in the airport of uh, Baghdad. Uh, and uh, I would add to what you mentioned, also the one that's trying to uh, surround Israel also with the... Even the Houthis in, in, in Yemen, not only by the militias, the Iranian pro-militias in Syria and Iraq and Islamic Jihad and Hezbollah, like you mentioned, we even have the Houthis in Yemen. So they are trying to build a ring uh, surrounding Israel. Now, there's an interesting thing that we should talk about, and this is uh, something that happened last week. There were two delegations, senior delegations of Islamic Jihad and Hamas visiting Tehran, uh, uh, meeting with uh, uh, Ali Khamenei, the supreme leader, and uh, also meeting with the uh, senior officers of the uh, Revolutionary Guards. And this guy, uh, Ziad al-Nahala, the head of the uh, uh, Islamic Jihad, he goes out and gives an interview uh, just uh, two days ago to uh, an Iranian news agency, and he's talking about, uh, and uh, he's meeting with uh, Ali Khamenei and discloses what was said in the meeting. And he said that he got orders uh, from Ali Khamenei to uh, uh, have the, all the Palestinian cities in the, he calls it the West Bank, of course, the Judea and Samaria, all the Palestinians, to equip them with weapons. Uh, and the Khamenei promised to uh, finance the, the purchasing of these weapons to all the Palestinian cities. Uh, in the West Bank in order to set up new battalions. New battalions, these are what we're talking about, armed groups of the Islamic Jihad in order uh, to fight uh, the, what they call the Zionist entity. And you were right when you said it's not an intifada because most of the Palestinian population does not participate in this uh, uh, um, uh, campaign of terror. It's only these small armed groups of the Islamic Jihad and they are also financing some Fatah groups who are against Israel are not part of the Palestinian Authority. Uh, Fatah groups, this is very important. They, 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 they have joined the Islamic Jihad and Hamas and Popular Front. And these battalions, actually, the, the hardcore of the, these battalions is Islamic Jihad, but the Hamas and the, uh, Fatah and the Popular Front are joining uh, the Islamic Jihad because they have, the, they have the money. They are controlling the money and controlling the weapons. What 
also happened during the last two years is the smuggling of weapons from the Jordanian border. Iran is responsible for all these big quantities of weapons in the, in the Judea of Samaria. They were smuggled through the Jordan. They came from uh, Iran to uh, Syria, from Syria to uh, Jordan, from Jordan into the uh, West Bank or Judea and Samaria. You know, uh, Yoni, what's extraordinary is that you hear virtually nothing coming from the Western powers calling on Mahmoud Abbas uh, to take to re to take control, or or you haven't heard this in the last weeks or the last months either of the territories that he was uh, he, he was uh, uh, mandated to take control. That he had the weapons, he had Amer he had American training, American and and Dayton, General Dayton, and General Dayton, and and others, uh, uh, special military coordinators trained them in Jordan, um, and and they have absolutely failed. In their mission, and and here Israel, this is exactly the underpinning, the security underpinning of the Oslo Accords, uh, and you hear nothing. You you hear even no you, uh, no de you have uh, no condemnation by Mahmoud Abbas or anybody around him about the the takeover by Iran. This is the big lie of of the Palestinians because you know they are coming out in the media and saying that it's Israel fault. What is happening in Judea and Samaria now? It's Israel fault. Why is it Israel fault? Because Israel is going into areas A, according to Oslo, which are the major uh, Palestinian cities, and, and, and uh, uh, confronting the armed uh, terrorists. But actually, according to Oslo, they, the responsibility of fighting terrorism is on the PA itself, not on Israel. They, they were supposed to fight these armed groups, which they didn't. Mahmoud Abbas has 30,000 armed forces, armed uh, personnel, that he could have used to prevent these terror attacks. He didn't do anything. He doesn't want to confront these armed groups in the north of Samaria. Why does he want to do that? Because he is afraid to lose his, uh, his chair or lose his regime. This is why he's not doing anything. He doesn't want to confront them. So uh, on one hand, he doesn't do anything about preventing terrorism. And the other hand, he blames Israel for the responsibility for what is happening. Yeah. That's the big Absolutely. And, and for our friends in Europe, the jihad in Jenin, the Iranian octopus's tentacles digging, uh, uh, wrapping themselves just over Israel's major cities, it has, has also hit European cities. Remember, there were, uh, we just came back from, uh, from London uh, accompanying the intelligence minister of Israel, Gila Gamliel, and we were uh, receiving also, uh, it's clear, reports that there had been 15 assassination attempts by the same IRGC, the same Quds Force that is now attacking uh, Israel and uh, uh, over, you know, eyeing Ben Gurion Airport with rockets and with uh, other weaponry above Tel Aviv. It's the same force that is planned and executed assassination attempts and other terror attacks on European soil against the United Kingdom and against Germany and against Belgium. So this this is the same discourse, Yoni ben Menachem, that we discussed in the 2006 war, why Israel had to win that war for the West. This is a war for the West. This is a war for freedom. It's not, this is not just a narrow counterterrorism operation in order to uh, prevent uh, extremists uh, who want to, uh, uh, you know, screw up the peace process between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. It's a much bigger war for, for the freedom of Israel, for the freedom of the West uh, and, and Europe and the United States by extension. Yeah, I think that uh, Mahmoud Abbas perfectly understand, Abu Mazen Mahmoud Abbas, he understand perfectly well that it's the Iranians who want to take control over the uh, Judea and Samaria, over the West Bank, and, and uh, not the Islamic Jihad only, because Iran is behind it. And this is a big danger for the PA, and still he doesn't do anything uh, about it. So. This is uh, something which is very worrying. But now, the last power in the world, I didn't mean to interrupt you, the last power in the world who wants a Palestinian state is the Islamic Republic of Iran. Of course. Which people, right? Which, and the, and the absurd discourse in the West is, is that they somehow uh, accuse Israel of building housing starts in areas under its control, which is, was, was signed, sealed, and delivered by witness guarantors from the United Nations to the European Union uh, to Egypt, Norway, and Russia. And yet the real cause uh, and the real obstacle to any kind of uh, potential 
uh, diplomatic outcome, besides the Palestinians themselves shooting themselves in the head all the time, is the Islamic Republic of Iran. It's the last thing they would allow to happen. And this is exactly why they're there. They're, they're, they're also there to destroy Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian Authority, kill Israel, and, and allow what they call, here's another distortion of language, the resistance network, the resistance network, otherwise known as the global terror movement, uh, in order to plant their um, uh, to plant their poisonous seeds inside Judea and Samaria, otherwise known as the former West Bank of Jordan. Yeah, and uh, another aspect of what uh, the Iranian strategy is is trying to uh, uh, turn the uh, this Judea and Samaria and, and the north of uh, uh, Samaria into uh, something like Gaza Strip. They want to set up uh, an infrastructure for uh, producing uh, rockets that will uh, be, sh be, be launched from the north of the West Bank towards Afula, towards uh, other cities uh, in Israel. And actually, uh, uh, during the operation in Gaza uh, a few weeks ago, uh, the head of the Shin Bet, Ronen Bar, he, he said, uh, he publicly he said that the, the Shin Bet uh, thwarted a few terrorist cells in the Jenin area that were actually making preparations to produce uh, uh, these uh, rockets that will be launched towards Afula and Hedera and other places in, uh, in the north of Israel. This is something very dangerous. And in, in the IDF operation this morning in Jenin, uh, the IDF soldier already found one uh, rocket launcher in, in, in Jenin itself. So there are preparations on the way, and this is why the, this uh, operation, IDF operation in Jenin is very important to, uh, uh, to prevent any uh, infrastructure, uh, infrastructure for producing uh, uh, rockets, and also uh, to eliminate these laboratories that are producing uh, big explosive devices, exactly like they do in Gaza. So this is a very important operation. The Palestinian public uh, in other areas in, in Gaza and in other areas uh, under the Palestinian Authority's um, supposed control, you haven't seen any sort of major uh, spreading of any kind of popular violence or uh, things of that sort here, do you? I mean, you, you haven't seen a, you know, a major response uh no 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 the, the the danger is the north of the judea and samaria the, these uh, three cities jenin nablus and uh, and tul karem uh, the islamic jihad during the last two years have managed to build a strong infrastructure and take over these cities and they are controlling when we say islamic jihad we're actually saying iran iran is controlling uh, jenin nablus and tul karem and this is a, a very dangerous. Yeah, it's a, so we, we'll add that to the list of other controlled cities like uh, Beirut and Baalbek. And, uh, you know, the look, the, the Iranians and their poodles, the, the Hezbollah, have been uh, provoking Israel over the last weeks. We see they set up outposts uh, on Israeli territory, on the Israeli side of the blue line with Lebanon. Uh, Israel chose to hold back. Uh, and not respond uh, forcefully. Trying diplomatically to to kick them out, but uh, it hasn't been successful so far. They only they they uh, cleared one tent and they they moved the people that were in that tent to the other tent, but they're still there. So uh, this is a matter of time until this thing will explode. Because eventually, if the uh, diplomatic effort of Israel to uh, make them withdraw will not succeed, Israel will have to do something militarily. To, to kick them out. Yeah, absolutely. It's very important to tell our our viewers, uh, and, and hopefully if American officials listen to this program, that there's an issue here of Israel uh, having to maintain defensible borders for itself. And that concept came after the 1967 war, which, you know, uh, in which Israel expanded its defensibility, its defensible defensibi uh, uh, defensibility, because topographically, uh, we were able to uh, expand our defensive, uh, you know, the, the land mass that we had. Israel is a very, very small country. And in Janine, in the northern, well, the, in northern Samaria, as we call it, which overhangs Israel's major cities, Israel's major infrastructure, Israel's major highways, Israel's, and, it, it, you know, Israel's uh, 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 major cities, including Ben-Gurion Airport, by the way. This is what is not spoken about. In defensible borders, we have got to have some topographical advantage because we don't have uh, we don't have uh, a strategic depth 
We have borders that are very narrow. We have uh, Israel, as people watching this program know, have borders that are nine miles wide at their narrowest point between the borders of Judea and the, the non-border or the lines of Judea and Samaria uh, as to the Mediterranean Sea. Yeah, this is, I have to tell you something on a personal note that I was very happy uh, to hear Prime Minister Netanyahu this week uh, saying that we have to straighten the, the power of the PA, but no, Palest no independent Palestinian state, because I think Netanyahu uh, is very right about what he said. Uh, an independent Palestinian state is a danger to Israel, because what will happen? We will have a, an Iranian independent state in the north there of Syria. Another, another yeah, ruling. We, uh, yeah, we will call have a, a, an independent Palestinian state. And, yeah. and what happening? what is happening in the last two years only proves that we cannot trust the PA because they're not fighting against terrorism. So what is expected from Israel to commit a security suicide and allow the Iranians to take over a Judea and Samaria so they can launch rockets towards us? More than that, Yoni, the jihad in Jenin right now is poses a strategic danger to the entire Middle East. It's not just Israel. People must understand that this foothold that the Islamic Republic of Iran and their Quds Force terror operatives have, have, have placed inside the refugee camps and the alleyways of Jenin with rocket factories and drone and, and developing drones and devices. explosive devices and mortars and machine guns, all of which are complete contravention of, of Oslo, pose a direct threat to the entire region. Because if Israel has to go in and, and it deepen this counterterrorism campaign, you know, it, it's going to have far-reaching effects on the entire Middle East. Exactly. This is a great danger. And uh, I think that uh, uh, there's now an Israeli effort. Last night there was a meeting. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, he called the uh, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant and the, the Chief of Staff and other uh, senior officials in the Israeli army uh, to discuss ways to straighten the uh, Palestinian Authority. So uh, and Israel is trying to revive the PA uh, in order for it to uh, take control of the north of Samaria and uh, also to fight against terrorism. This is something that I, as an analyst, I simply fail to understand. The, the PA is a, is a problem. It doesn't, it's not the solution. It's proven itself that it's not the solution. It's a problem. So there is this ongoing debate in Israel about strengthening the PA, strengthening the PA security forces. There is cooperation between Israel's... Yeah, but uh, now it's becoming also an American request, official request from Israel to straighten the PA. So uh, Netanyahu is responding positively to the request of President Biden, and Israel is trying to find ways to straighten it. But uh, Abu Mazen or Mahmoud Abbas, he has to help himself. He has to understand that the problem is not Israel. The problem is Iran, which is a big danger for him first before Israel. And it's the same Mahmoud Abbas that spends hundreds of millions of dollars a year of Israeli uh, uh, tax, um, uh, uh, Israeli, uh, what they call envelope, uh, yeah, well, pass uh, uh, payments, pass-through payments yeah. that Israel collects, that Mahmoud Abbas and his senior advisory staff have created a terror incentive annuity uh, called Pay for Slay, which is not uh, as some uh, uh, far-left Jewish organizations have said, or Social Security payments. This is a separate terror line item in the PA budget that incentivizes young Palestinians to go out and kill Israelis. And so on the one hand, here you have Abu Mazen inciting to murder the very people he now is, is complaining about that is taking over territories that he's supposed to uh, maintain uh, 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 law and order and, and peace. It's it's an absurdity. So to say to strengthen Mahmoud Abbas would be to 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 strengthen the source of the problem, not the source of the solution. Yeah, but you know this is a diplomatic game, and Israel has to play by the rules of the international community. So I think the Israeli government now is trying to to maneuver to do what it can do, uh, trying to straighten up the PA. But we know it's a lost cause. Nothing will come out of it. This is absurd. You know. This morning, seven terrorists were killed in, in Jenin, Islamic Jihad. They were killed by the IDF during the, the clashes there. These terrorists were operating first to topple Abu Mazen regime. And, and the absurd is that now their families will be paid by the PA. Yeah, that's right. Those who were killed today yeah. in Jenin, who, are, who favor the toppling of the same Palestinian Authority, who will then pay them cash annuity payments for life right. because they sacrificed their life uh, 
their lives for the sake of jihad, for the sake of Palestine, quote unquote. For the sake of Iran. And for this and now really, as you say very well, Yanni Ben Megan, for the sake of the Islamic Republic of Iran. So there you, you can't really make this up. This is so absurd. Uh, it, but this is, you know, this is exactly what the, the, the West uh, needs to understand. Um, I think the, the Israeli body politic has come to understand that Israel is not in a territorial war. It is in a war for its very existence. And people have difficulty understanding that because Israel looks very strong. Uh, and is we do have a strong defense uh, force and we're a very well-trained army. But let's let's be very clear. Iran is many, many times the size of Israel and is surrounded Israel, outflanked Israel in a pincer movement. Yeah. And we have to break this uh, circle. We have to, f- to find a way to, uh, to fight this thing. And uh, I think that uh, what is happening now is very important because finally, after two years, after two years of this uh, terror monster growing slowly and slowly and becoming a big monster, as we see now in the north of Samaria, finally the Israeli army or let's say political echelon is taking the initiative. After the, the, the governments of Bennett and uh, Lapid didn't do anything to, to fight this uh, phenomenon. Well, where does that leave us in, uh, in terms of uh, why the IDF is, it, it appears, according to reports, as we're sitting in the podcast here in the studio, headline uh, reports uh, come across the uh, cell phone screens saying that uh, Israel is, apparently is going to end uh, or this is according to the reports anyway, uh, to end uh, the uh, counterterrorism operation after a day or two. But uh, it's, it, it doesn't seem possible to do the necessary, uh, the, uh, what you would say, uh, cleaning out the poisonous, uh, the poisonous nest of Iranian-backed terror in a day or two. Definitely. What was needed actually was to uh, recruit reserves and uh, take one Israeli division, IDF division, and... Uh, occupy, reoccupy for a limited period of time all the north of Samaria. I'm talking about Jenin, uh, Nablus, and Tulkarem for two, three weeks and clean the infrastructure of terror and then withdraw and, and uh, make the PA uh, forces go into these areas. But apparently, uh, from a diplomatic point of view, it's very difficult to do it now. So I think uh, the political echelon chose. Uh, to concentrate now on the uh, the capital of terrorism, the Iranian terrorism in the West Bank, in the Judea and Samaria, which is Jenin. And uh, they will try to do a, a very limited operation and see what the results, but I'm sure that in the future, as you said, there will be no other uh, choice but to go and uh, do a large-scale operation in the north of Samaria. Fighting jihad in Jenin on behalf of the free world. That's really what we're, we're doing here, Yoni ben Menachem. Your, your analyses are precise, concise, and insightful. Uh, we really uh, thank you uh, for, for uh, showing us in, uh, some context here. Um, this is an, an important concept. Israel is fighting for its, own, for its own well-being, its own survival, its own stability and security, but also for the security and well-being of the Western world uh, from uh, from the hills of northern Samaria. Against the Iranian octopus. Against the Iranian octopus. And and there you have it. I think we've uh, we've put a punctuation mark, an exclamation mark on this program. Yoni ben Menachem, Arab Affairs and National Security Analyst with the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. I'm Dan Dyker, President of the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. We invite uh, our, our viewers and listeners to come to jcpa.org and get all the latest and greatest analyses uh, that are right on the top of the site uh, by Yoni and others uh, in the center on Iran, on the Iranian octopus, on the ongoing war, uh, the ongoing war uh, against, uh, uh, against uh, Iranian attempted regional and ultimately, as Professor Bernard Lewis said, global domination. And, uh, and please come and join us every week on Our Middle East, Al-Shak Al-Asadlana. It is Our Middle East, all of us, Jews, Christians, Muslims, um, goodness, Alawis, Alawites, Turkmen's, Baluchis, you name it, we, and Druze. We have so many different, we have so many different communities across the Middle East. That's what we try to do on the show is to really reveal the richness, the complexity of the entire Middle East. And Janine plays its little part in what we hope will be the security stability and prosperity of, of the Middle East and to really to destroy the root of this uh, evil regime that is killing its own people uh, with the same fervor uh, that it is attempting to kill off the nation state of the Jewish people. Uh, they will not succeed. I'm confident in that. Yoni ben Menachem, 
Thank you ever so much for joining us on Our Middle East. Thank you for having us.